I'm really big on simplicity. I, I overcomplicated it a lot when I first got growing. I got Ed Rosenthal's book and um, Jorge Cervantes' book. And instead of reading them like a guide, I read them like a book. My next question would be, what would be the medium that you would suggest for a first time grower? I was able to grow not really successfully because it was just bag seed, tossed there, no topping, no training, let it grow. And it turned super purple from environmental stress. And I thought I was the best grower. I'm like, I'm not a drug addict. I, and I told my probation officer, I was like, I am going to smoke when I'm off probation and when I'm out of juvie. And I saw him at a festival some years back and I was like, hey, dude, the only reason I switched to cocoa was because locally when I was buying soil, I kept getting root aphids in it. And then I just was liking how it was growing. And then I was like, yeah, I don't see a huge difference like a lot of people will claim because it's like, again, if you're doing everything right in the environment, the micro macronutrients, it, the end product's pretty comparable, man. A good company has got to listen to that feedback and help and change and and want to engage with the community further. And you know, absolutely not, dude. you know, they can't always get butt hurt, you know. The man, the myth, the legend. Rob from CLTV is joining us here on Perfect Gardens TV. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Make sure to also check us out on Facebook and our Instagram. Let's go ahead and get into it, guys. Make sure to check out our monthly membership. For as little as $2.99 a month, you get access now to 105 members, 2,586 photos, 274 videos, 21 files, 1,106 shared links, and much, much more. Mike, go ahead with your first question. Just one. Okay. So, Rob, with all your uh, your websites and your uh, casting, you uh, have a lot of influence on your uh, on new growers, new small growers. So, what would be what is your approach with them? What what is your uh, your first advice? I'm really big on simplicity. I, I overcomplicated it a lot when I first got growing. I got Ed Rosenthal's book and um, Jorge Cervantes' book. And instead of reading them like a guide, I read them like a book. And so by the time I went to the next point, I'm like, oh shit, this is the way to grow. After I, I was so sure I was going to grow this way. And then all of a sudden I get to hydro and I'm like, oh, okay, notes, notes, notes. And I've got this huge thing of notes of things that are not applicable because I'm only going to have one method of growing. And not, and not at any point was my thought process about genetics. I just thought I just get weed plants. So I get everything tight and then I just got to get plants. Doesn't matter what they are, as long as I got plants. I got 12 of these random clones, don't know what they are. But I realized that I'm overcomplicating everything. If I would just simplify that process and get the basics of learning how to grow down before I'm trying to learn everything, I wouldn't have had about six years of mediocre harvest to get going. I would have had a lot quicker. Like people I see in the community, they're killing it on their first grow. And I'm like, dude, oh my gosh, you're a better grower than I am. And you've only been doing it for six months, you know, but it's they skip past the trial and error by paying attention to content creators and going through forums and blogs and it's really a big difference in today's knowledge base that you can really get direct help from these content creators. You can see their journey and how they grow and you can read the comments to see if people are grilling them and if it's bullshit. So it's a lot easier to just simplify the approach. I completely agree with you actually on that. And maybe this isn't exactly what you meant, but the Ed Rosa, the, I like Ed, I know Ed, but his book and also the Jorge Cervantes, it was just, I thought it, I thought those books potentially did more damage to the cannabis industry uh, than good personally and yes yeah i completely agree with that actually yeah i don't think it's in a negative intention i just think that it was overwhelming for a lot of new growers who kind of needed some bro science to get them started and then the grow science comes when they're like well all right i know the what's not how it's the why like mm -hmm. why is this happening if someone's telling me to do this 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 great i'm following this recipe i don't know how to cook but i'm following a recipe on a blog a lot of people do that people claim to be good cooks but they just follow a recipe book and that's how you can start growing we're not reinventing the wheel once you learn the basics try new things and then, and then get it a little more advanced and then add something in that might be a little more next level. And at a certain point, all this next level shit isn't there because you've gone incrementally advancing little by little by little, you can get good harvest under your belt. You're confident. You've got enough smoke that you're not stressing out to pull your next round too early or smoke it before it's cured. Yeah. You know? so, so my next question would be, what would be the medium that you would suggest for a first time grower? What, what do you, what products do you like to, to keep it simple? So I personally use cocoa, but I would recommend soil like a soy potting mix, something that'd be a little more forgiving and that you don't have to have as, as much input. You know what I'm saying? Like you could start with, I don't know, a lot of people complain about like uh, ocean forest and Fox farm saying like it's too hot or this and that, but you can start with that and maybe cut it a little bit with uh, a peat moss or with something else to start a little more efficiently instead of having to go with an inert media like I did, where you had, you're in hundred percent control. So mistakes are on you and it, it's easy to get tripped up when you don't have the microbial life and the beneficial bacteria and, and the environment within the media kind of working with you. 
and you have to be mother nature. That's it's a little tougher when you're dealing with the hydros or, you know, any sort of media that's a, a soilless media. So I would think that's starting with that just to learn how the plant grows, learn plant training, learn your vegging, learn signs of how your plant finishes, your light intensity, the environment, all these things. And then you could play with the medias and see which one you're going to get the best result in terms of end product. So you're basically saying to learn how to read your plants before you jump in too deep in the water, right? Yes, yes. Even even quite literally. Don't jump right into the water until you can read a plant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it. it sounds like you even kind of even suggest a lot of your growers to take whatever the industry is recommending and halving it, right? Right there in the very beginning. Yeah. 90% of the time I'd run, I grow a lot of finicky cultivars. Like even the breeder themselves would be like, eh, if you get the pheno, that's the keeper. She's a little finicky in bed. She's, you know, doesn't like to eat a lot at this point. But then all of a sudden, once you flip into flowers, she's real hungry. I'm like, ah. I can't just grow it like normal cannabis. Like I really have to work this in a whole new light. And like, that's my favorite smoke most times, but I have to start at a lower dose nutrient. Otherwise I burn them quick. They're, they're stressed out. You know, it's funny what we do for our plants. Like, you know, this morning I was giving my plants carbonated water and I'm massaging my roots, my, my stems, you know, <laughs> I don't even do that for my wife. You know what I mean? <laughs> Here I am taking care of my girls like the, like they were the most precious thing in, in the world. But, uh, yeah. Because they, they yeah, are the most precious thing. Yeah, well, they, the are, hobby, they are. There's not many hobbies that you can have that have uh, a straight up reward at the end of it. You know, you can be you could be in like modeling airplanes. You could be into martial arts and you, know, you get a trophy or like, yeah, that flew real good. But the end product of this great work you did with the plant, you have this super dank bud that you're able to consume and help people or help yourself with as well. And that I feel like for me makes why a lot of people are, whether it's a selfish intention or not, but are really, really on top of their plants and motivated to do that because it's like, man, I got to do all this work for that end result. If you're a long-term thinker and into the marathon, it's, it's attractive. It's fun, you know? So as we can go on in that direction, what, what is attracting you? What strains are attracting you the most these days? Or do you extract or do you just grow for flower? What is, what are your, what is your preference in uh, consuming? I'm a flower guy myself. Okay. Just love flower. I don't know what it is, but I've, I guess kind of old school. I started smoking when I was really young. Like My friend Dave Side used the same way. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I, mean, I like rosin. Don't get me wrong. I like all extracts, but it's just more, I think, I definitely can admit that there's uh, maybe placebo or a full addiction with the tobacco leaf. I quit smoking cigarettes when I was 21, so nine years ago, and I just smoke a ton of blunts. So there's Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank 21. You. Thank you. You're welcome. 21 <laughs> years of age. You quit. Nice job. Yeah. I'm on my yeah. birthday. I crushed a pack of Newports and threw it. I was like, fuck these. I'm done. Just smoking 10 <laughs> times the weed. And I've done that. Now I go through like 60 blunts in a week. So, yeah, so no, but one habit but, for the next, you know? Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately. You, you know, Rob, I got uh, COVID lately. And uh, because I smoke a lot of weed and a lot of resin, I got no lung infection. And I bounced back even before my, my, uh, the two people I share my life with uh, that don't smoke as much as me got it a lot rougher than I did. So. And, exercises. And not gonna... We've also found that people that they cut them open, they find out if they smoke this herb, they, they have less plaque or, or something in their arteries, arteries or something like that as well. So hmm. there is a lot of... I <laughs> really think it's federally illegal. Out. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> don't take care of the people. Just Okay. Ugh. So as I can bounce onto... Uh, how old were you when you started growing? Um... Well, for the medical program, it was 18. Yeah, well, allegedly. Okay, let's, let's <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> we have this allegedly. thing here. We can say allegedly, and then we can say whatever. It's, you know, it's in statute limitations. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, when I was 14, actually, so my, I won't make a long story out of it. My grandma's okay, so that name like, is wait, Rainbow. You were 14. Did you ever get caught by your mom? <sighs> That's where I was going. So my grandma's <laughs> legal name is Rainbow, and kind of hippie-ish, you know, and uh, still to this day, pretty that way. And my mom has always been pretty cool. And I was, uh, at the time I was on probation and then I just got, got off like temporarily because I moved to a different area. I was a little troublemaker and I had some plants and she found them and like, didn't say anything. She just harvested most of them, but left one for me. I was like, oh, thanks mom. Appreciate it. But it was like this unspoken thing. Like she knew, I knew, we knew, you know what I'm saying? It was only once I was 16 that she kind of come out and say like, Hey, I know you're smoking. Don't smoke in the house. I'm like, but you're smoking in the house. She'd never know because it's stunk in the house anyways. But I was able to grow not really successfully because it was just bag seed tossed there no topping no training let it grow and it turned super purple from environmental stress and i thought i was the best grower and it tasted like chlorophyll but there was brick at the time all we had was straight up brick from texas or mexico and so this was like 
the best shit out there, but only like a quarter ounce total. But I thought it was the best grower on the planet. So hey, it was your own because it was your own. And it was a compliment. You know, I did the same thing. I had put my uh, first little plants on the back of a shed in the back of the yard on the roof, thinking that they would get full sun, but they cooked, right? And then for sure, I attracted attention by like, you know, you're 13, you know, take these things out. But anyway, that's an interesting story. Thanks for sharing that. How old were you when you were on probation? 13. Yeah, actually, so, 12, I was 12. So I got caught with a joint in my pack of cigarettes. I was a little shithead. I lived in an urban area and I was totally fine. I moved to a small suburban area and like the cops are out there and you get curfew tickets for being out past nine. So I'm out with my buddies and they just pull us over. I'm like, what? And then they catch me with this, get in the system and it's a vicious circle. I kept dropping dirty, getting fights at school. It was all minor stuff, but I didn't get off till I was 18 until the adult probation was like, nah, we're good. We don't, we don't want them. I was like, thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. You kept you on for that long for a joint? Yeah. I had to go for it. Cool, because I kept dropping dirty. I had to go to, like, juvie for to clean out and shit. Like, I had to go to outpatient right. drug therapy with heroin addicts. And I had to say, my That's name crazy. is Rob, and I'm a drug addict. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not a drug addict. I, and I told my probation officer, I was like, I am going to smoke when I'm off probation and when I'm out of juvie. And I saw him at a festival some years back. And I was like, hey, dude, this is what and I do for my career. Me. Like, this yeah. is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I still smoke. Actually, I smoke a lot more than I used to. But I'm doing okay, Floyd. Appreciate the motivation. Okay. So now my next question, Rob. Well, is real quick, this- that that actually does, and this is a conversation real fast that David Dave, uh, uh, David and I had that this plant, it's not just this plant, they're healers in general. Like in our society, we we you know, we wear lots of clothes, lots of branding, so we don't kind of our community kind of doesn't notice our subtleties or our powers our internal powers naturally so they're kind of confused and but but my point to this is that you have had this relationship with this plant for a very long time you know and you know in other communities in other worlds you know they uh you know a medicine man or someone that was more knowledgeable or more experienced with whatever was going on would have probably have dragged you to the side and said hey you got a relationship with this plant, you know, hone in on it. And it's very interesting kind of just how our society takes our talents or takes, uh, and I'm not trying to be a conspiracy theorist around this. It's just, I've had deeper conversations with other people that have had very long-term relationships with their medicine, whatever the medicine was. And it's like life keeps kind of like protecting them. And, uh, you know, they, they're they protected while other people get worse off or whatever until they're in a position like yourself right now where you can uh, continue to keep sharing it with the future, yeah. right, with other people. So that's really cool, man. I, I, appreciate, I appreciate that, that story. Yeah. It's, a, it's a deeper thing. I feel like uh, that's we're all connected because of the plant, that the roots connected us. So many people in the community I, I work with now, even me and Pigeons and, and Chris and you know, Mr. Growett, we met because of our community of people who have a fellow bond between the plant. And now we have all these other common grounds you know, you pull apart the layers and you see like, wow, we, all these things, but the common ground was the plant. And that's what brought us together. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just crazy how that works. That's my conspiracy is why it's not legal. It's because they don't want us all to bond and connect so much. Like, no, let's keep them separate. That's something I do with high school. Easier to control when you're separate. Exactly. That's a, that's a top one's conversation there. (laughs) Well, I'll throw another one out there to you too, right there. Kind of like what you just said right there. And Mike, then after this, please take, pick back up off with your conversation. Sometimes I distract the guys. Um, I'm that guy. I buy channels. So it's cool. The, what was I going to say? This is what makes a good shows, you know? Was, what was I going to say? It was, um, the weed is working oh, and it's a good thing well the what you're talking about on community right like like if a lot of times if you smoke a cigarette and i could be wrong on this i could be totally wrong on this because i don't smoke cigarettes but in my viewpoint normally when someone smokes a cigarette it's a very fast process it kind of amps you up a little bit gets you ready to get going again and it's normally a one two com, two person conversation be, unless someone else is smoking with you to stay on a higher level of vibration, right? But then once when, you're out, you know, some people are chain smokers, but you're back to work instantly, right? And then with, with our plant, it's more of like a sit down process or a, a more of like a, let's talk bonding for a while. process. A what? A bonding process. Bonding, a, yeah. a bonding process, exactly. So in, in law, though, it's very interesting. If you are breaking the law, you have 
three or more, uh, if you have three or more people together conspiring to break the law, they, it, um, it's an, uh, you're charged as an organization. Yeah. Yes. An organization. Yeah. An organization. Well, there's, there's right. very clear it's three or more. It's an organization five or more. It's an enterprise. And there's different, different consequences to each of these second things. That's why you only want to have two people in a conversation. But my point to this is that uh, there's, I, I've always believed that there's a certain amount of static electricity that begins to f- create friction in the ether. That as you bring, as, just like if you go to church, right? More people congregate together, more static electricity happens, and then you're able to create, like, bring more into the reality, more things manifest into your into your hands. So it's kind of like what you're saying. I, I also, I do think that in some level, maybe we forgot why. But a long time ago, I think they've recognized the power of this plan and what it does to us and how we vibrate together when we're around it. And I think for those reasons as well, it, it, it's been, it's on a taboo list. 100%, 100%. I fucked up naming my brand can anything because I feel like I've been blacklisted across the internet, you know, which is crazy. I said this, the scientific proper version of it, if I would have called it marijuana lifestyle, if I would have called it weed lifestyle, pot lifestyle, it probably would have been okay. But because I'm trying to properly educate, I feel like because teaching people how to manufacture, so to speak, or get this plant going, it's an issue. But if I was just doing five gram dabs on there, I bet you I'd be having 500,000 followers and fucking 100,000 views on every video. It's like, it's crazy how it's okay to muddy the perception of what this plant is. But then when you want to make it a real clean quality thing, it, it, you got to fight to push through so people see it. It's nuts. Absolutely. Hitting Absolutely. the bong out of your nose and stuff. They're afraid of that, Rob, because they, they're afraid we'll go back to the hemp economy. And that's why they don't want to, they always keep, they're always, they're going to let it go because the social mentality is at, at that point, but they're still going to try and hold it down. Like, why didn't they just make it legal completely in the United States? Why is it state by state? You know, this, this, uh, oh. yeah. anyway, let's not state. go there. I got, I got a better fucking question than that. With, since you've been involved in marijuana, have you traveled for this plan at all? Have you been, uh, have you been out? Like, well, we were going to go to, we probably still are going to go to Spanibus in March, as long as the restrictions don't get put in place. It's more worrying about Canada because that's where pigeons lives, but I've gone to multiple events when it comes to like getting, getting flour, you're talking about like getting my own cannabis. Like and that, what I meant, like, like, like me, my background, I started growing in Jamaica. Then I immigrated to Spain, did three years in Europe and did all the whole Europe thing. That's and then awesome. I came back so that's what I meant. Did, did you ever like me? It was because of this plant that I did all those those experiences, right? So I was wondering if you had kind of the same same kind of thing going on. Mine would be more like leaning towards the the content creation or business side of things. Like I would have never have gone to nearly as many cannabis events or commercial grows. Like this this year alone, we went to twelve different events, which mm-hmm. is crazy to think. You know, even going to Vegas, like we had fourteen of our team, like team members out there all together. You know, from what across what the, which the one world. was uh, which one was your favorite out of the fourteen? was it vegas, vegas was or was it, yeah to have everybody yeah. there it was the first time meeting pigeons and, and mr grow in person which was crazy we worked together That's for true. a year and never been together in person and then we had jaria and fucking uh mad hemp god was there. i mean we had so many people i was like how the hell did we all make it and it's nuts all at mj bizcon together like it was really cool it was really cool so starting because the plant you know the starting yeah. corporations needing bookkeepers Nini yeah. accountants, all that <laughs> shit. You're just like, yeah, I have dude. employees. Like, what the fuck? I know. How did this pay, paying, paying your taxes, paying your taxes, <laughs> and they don't kick your door. Oh my gosh, I'm paying taxes for something that I'm doing like this. I'm like, I can't believe this is legit. I, like, that's you know, why you call it stoned and successful, right? That's why you say goal, that. Man. I mean, that's you know, you know, uh, Rob. I was never on social media until uh, Grasshopper came in my life, and I met Mark. And then I started doing this, right? And then it just took off. But I've been doing this for years. You know, I was big time. And then when it came legal, I had the resources to get all the permits and to grow, you know. And now I expand by a thousand plants a season. So, Damn, that's awesome, man. See, that's where it's the experience that you could bring into this industry that a lot of people in this industry don't have. They just have a piece of paper that says they have experience. Well, yeah, but you can't really share my kind of experience because not a lot of people are doing it on my scale. But on your end, you have a lot of small growers that look up to you, like the home growers. And like, it's uh, it's awesome, man. People. It's super, super humbling when people give me the credit that I do. It's like, I'm just sharing my experiences. I'm no expert. I'm a master of my garden. I'm not a master grower. Like, I, I make mistakes still. 
you know, but it's, it's, I try to help people avoid those mistakes. And that's the key thing is it's all people who teach like even Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins is telling you things he has avoided and things that worked good for him. He's not saying like, I'm the best at everything. It's about teaching those life lessons and trying to help the next person. And that's the most like fulfilling thing I feel like you could do. Like once you get to the point where you're financially comfortable, it's helping people, it's giving back and oh. doing things like that. That's real wealth is you're like, man, I, I can actually do this shit. People are appreciating me. And like, it's not because of some vain bullshit reason why I do it. It's like, you really feel this like giddiness, like a euphoric feeling after doing shit like that. When somebody messages me their garden, I'm like, dude, this is what my, it was. Here's what it is. This is my first poll. I'm like, dude, this is fucking amazing. I can't even, I'm so proud. Like and it's cool to be part of it. Eh? That's what's it cool is, about it. It is. And, and people it's, remember I forget I'm like the figurehead person. Like sometimes I'm with everybody. Like I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm on camera. That's right. I forget. Yeah. You know, so, I, this might sound really stupid and, but, but probably the most, I, in my, in my mind, it's just, is someone bringing you something or showing you something and you getting the opportunity to pat them on the back and tell them you're proud of them. You know, I think oh, yeah. that's just to motivate them. Get, let's get to the next second grow. You know, yeah. why aren't you replant it? You know, it's like, um, I think well, that, I that's Vegas. my favorite part whenever someone shows me something for the first time is I get an opportunity to say something positive. If you, if you look at like, if for new people coming in, like if you look at the, in the times we're in, it couldn't be more better. I mean, really the community as a whole, everyone is so welcoming to each other. So warm, like, like, you know, you're on discord, Rob, like all the photos, all the, the communications, the same thing with, with the people that we network here at perfect gardens helping and guiding certain individuals and, and, and their processes. And there's so much out there. I mean, just look at, look at what you, what you're connecting people with, you know, CLTV from the stash top buds. I mean, it, it's so, it, it's expanding so big and it's, it's such a, it's so great to have information. So if you're an organic grower, you can find people. Yeah, green, green goblin yeah, exactly. right, in, right in your community right in your community yeah. or if you want to do hydroponics you know there's there's that mix right and and you you've done that too you you're currently using dutch pro and then you've done organic you just started doing autos like do you find yeah. yourself always going to be experimenting or do you find you're you're going to maybe dial into one one technique versus more than the other <sighs> I got to dial it in. I've been doing too much for <laughs> content for people. because They asked me to do it. And I'm like, fuck, dude, quit pheno hunting. Keep what you like and fucking get a couple pounds out of your grow and quit pussyfooting around and trying all this shit for content. Like, it's cool right. to do and pe people want to see it. And I, I don't want to just take Google images and be like, you know, here's this, this and this. I want to actually do it. And so I want to have the experience to tell somebody, here's my thoughts. Like for organics, I'd always have my opinion because I've smoked both. And I'm like, I, I still don't understand where somebody thinks organics just taste better naturally just because it's organic. Like it, it was grown better. That's why it was better. Like this batch was grown better. They had all the micros and macros it fucking needed. Like, yeah. but yet people will argue that. So then I tried it for myself with my favorite cultivar. I'm like, yeah, sure. Shit. Okay. Boom. And I did it for myself. And I see it's like, it grew great. Yeah. It was easy. I didn't have to do nearly as much compared to bottled nutrients. Like I just watered at that point once I didn't make the mix and I got those results. And so having those experiences for me are priceless, but at the same time, there yeah. is a price because then I have a bunch of, but I don't like. And I've got to do another run of stuff that I'm like, how am I going to do this now? What's my <laughs> process? Am I going to go like I should, or am I going to do something for content's sake? Hmm. Right. That, that's actually another really good thing, a point you brought up too about, you know, sometimes I hate doing the, the eight minute one-offs because I, I get isolated down to one very specific question, not taking into account a whole bunch of other things. And I, and like, and I just, I think sometimes I'm doing people a disservice because of it, but that's what they want. They want seven minute videos. They want yeah. these short, like, yeah. like, Hey, can you show me sea green? Can you show me straw? Can you quick, show boom, me boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. exactly? Then somebody also wants a fucking two hour seed to harvest video too. And they're like, you know how long that takes? Like go right. and have a conversation know, with Matt, know, Mr. Bro. Canuck and see <laughs> It, like I've talked to him a few times and like, he's the, the Steven Spielberg of fucking herb, man. He's, he's yep. killing it. And like the, the problem is it takes him a month or two months to, to make the video, let alone he has to grow the stuff for like and, four months. And he's got a lot of different separate rooms and a lot of things always going on. Mothers, yeah. Reg, clones. I mean, he's got that full cycle. So yeah. It takes months. He's he, he normally drops like once a month or so. Yeah. Yeah. And like the, the amount cinema. of time editing that, like 
just my videos aren't as, as cinematic and like I can attest for like my organic seed to harvest video was I took about 25 hours of time to edit that total. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's yeah. like, you can just throw something out there. You could put a lot of effort into the content, but then you also have the information that backs behind it too. And then in, in my case, like I want to do some hydro videos because I've grown in hydro before, but I don't really want to do any hydro because I like my setup I'm doing right now. It doesn't make any sense to me, you know? So it's, that's the balance man between content creator and grower like i want to have my own garden but i want to help people in their gardens so that's where i try like to collaborate more and work with other people real quick um if let's say no one has ever seen you before maybe you could flip back to the other side real quick dave um if uh, no one's ever seen you before could you give us a quick breakdown um of each of your shows like what are what is what is the content about obviously it's about these plants but what is the each show about so that if they tuned into you they they know what to expect on each of these shows all right cool i like that actually so elevator pitches for both so from the stash pretty much is a collective of the three content creators myself pigeons for 20 mr grow it and that's that's the three of us so we basically are all growers in separate areas with separate geographies and separate approaches, but we have a common ground and that's the plant. And so coming together and having these discussions instead of these short videos that are seven minutes, eight minutes, we all can have an opinion that takes this conversation from a short informational video to a full discussion that can take levels and layers and all sorts of shit out. We've had hour long discussions. So the biggest area with from the stash is we take a small subject and expand out and we go deeper than just the plant. We talk about government holding down the plant, um, the community we had 420 cnn they're talking about the cannabis community we've talked about um, like social media and cannabis youtube hating cannabis, a lot of things like that so it's pretty much all based on the plant but not always just growing the plant but it's got uh two times a week we're live and we got videos once a week on youtube anywhere you listen to audio live right on twitch yeah live on twitch twice a week on, on tuesdays twitch. and thursdays yeah so yeah, man, we're, we're putting a lot of work there. And Cannabis Lifestyle TV is a little different. That's more topical based, very informational, where it's like expe- or specifically, specifically an experiential mm-hmm. video that's going to be, you know, how to top your plants, uh, scrogging your plants, um, five things to avoid when growing autos, you know, very specific topical based content. For the last two years during the pandemic, we were doing live streams on a regular basis. And it was literally just because I was like, people are at home, they're bored. Yeah. And they got nothing going on. We should just go live and kick it and smoke. And then it kind of transitioned into our live informational based videos where we get into our discussions, but it's like a shorter discussion. And then we'll check out the homies garden. So the gromies we call them. So that's the grower homies. And uh, it's, it's pivoting though. We're changing. We, we took the live streams off of YouTube just because it was actually hurting our channel. We saw analytic wise, it wasn't doing good. And now we're over on Twitch with that. So we're going to be doing live streams on Twitch, making it a little more topical and segment based and trying to tighten it up. Do so them live on Twitch and then upload them on, yeah, on from we're the stash on cut YouTube. Them, cut them yeah. and make them tighter so it's not just this loose. Like you just discussion. had, you just did that with uh, Vader OG with uh, the breeding talk. You, know, you just uploaded yeah. that. And because uh, anyone yeah, that well. didn't see that live missed out on some supreme content Great. with Vader. Well, and the big reason we decided to start recording them live is because we would record them separately and then go live. And then we tell right. people what we kind of did. And I'm like, well, fuck it. Why don't we have like a studio audience? But you know, virtual yep. studio audience and they're going to be involved in the conversation. They'll, they'll say something in there and I'll be like, hey, you know, hey, ZAZ over here in the Twitch chat just said, you know, how he does it is he tops his plants after it's at the fourth note, it's at the fifth. Like, but that's where you get those conversations that are so in depth where whatever thought you may have had is probably touched on. I think yeah. the live format is, is really better because we're just the ones on camera and have the microphones. We're trying to speak with the community, not just for the community. You know? mm-hmm. Absolutely. For people- A lot of people want to experience that. Exactly. I, I always did. And people wouldn't respond to my fucking comments and it pisses me off. They'll do it like a year later. And I'm like, eh, I was in the kitchen actually cooking that right then, but I appreciate you letting me know I ruined that, that meal. Thanks. So. So then Rob vlogs is a little different. It's more like personal kind of what I'm doing updates on business updates in the garden. Um, just, just me only. I feel like when I put videos on cannabis lifestyle TV of just me, it's not fair to the audience. Cause it's me and Trey and then Trey's not there. I'm like, let me, let me just put this on my own channel. You know what I'm saying? We'll do something separately in a totally different area. And then Top Buds is the, the black sheep in the mix where a lot of people assume this was a straight cannabis show, but it's kind of a shit show. Like we just, the stuff that me and Pigeons talk about offline that I'm like, oh, we'll get canceled for this. And then I'm like, you know it's what? Like our Saturday calls. It's like when we do a group call, it starts off with no topic and it goes like just everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I enjoy yeah. it. And it, some people get offended by the stuff we say, but I always just say, man, like I, me and pigeons disagree politically all the time. And 
I don't care. We're cool. Like we're friends. I'm not going to let some opinion on something like that change my opinion on a person when we've been awesome and cool the whole time. And, and most times the person, if they have enough emotional intelligence, we can have a good conversation and end it by like, yeah, you know, I still disagree, but I see where you're coming from. Absolutely. You know, that that yeah. should be how it should be as a fucking human, you know, mm-hmm. respectful disagreement. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it's crazy how we have so many people who like hate each other over little things, political stuff, you know, medical, whatever social things. And it's like, we, we can smoke about it and have a good conversation and move past it. Right. But you, no. there's always going to be there's always going to be people in the comments and stuff. And the majority of the community is always so open and welcoming. And then you have some trolls that are just a, to a whole nother level. You, yeah. I mean, you've done that, that, that a parody with uh, what's his name in the Grow Kings, <laughs> the Grow Kings, you know, <laughs> fucking shit. Rob, Rob, is we can touch back on your preferred medium is Coco, right? I yeah. do you think, do you ever notice that? You can tell a person's personality by the style of medium they're using. Like, is this laid back or go organic? Is somebody- <laughs> 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 that's good, man. No, that's good. I like by, that. by the type of dog I'm they're walking around with, can you tell like who me. they are? I love that shit. Like, no, listen, it was a serious question, right? So oh, you, good. Like, good. you like fucking uh, Coco, but Coco, you got to control everything, right? Are you like I'm that? Guy, dude. Like, Rob, we, we are psychologically like profiling you right now based on the it, dude. media you're using. So be careful with what you say. Yeah, dude, it's yeah, good. I talk think it. It. No, but it's true. Do, do you think, kind do you of. agree with that thought process? Or is like somebody to work, like, is, is you're not somebody yeah. like, Dave, the, Dave, my friend Dave side you would be really good with Coco because he writes everything down and he's the, meticulous. My friend, uh, the uh, way Ken. you answer this question, we will know what underwear you purchase. Oh, yeah. yeah this will yeah, make or yeah. break. I might be canceled after this. So let's be careful. <laughs> no, you know, I, I can get targeted with that, all dude. these ads. I know. And people are going to be pissed. Like, Robin, <laughs> grow weed. It's like, I, I totally, the only reason I switched to cocoa was because locally when I was buying soil, I kept getting root aphids in it. And then I just was liking how it was growing. And then I was like, yeah, fuck it. I don't see a huge difference. Like a lot of people will claim because it's like, again, it, if you're doing everything right in the environment, the micro macronutrients, it, the end product's pretty fucking comparable, man. I've been yeah. one of these, these commercial grows. I see some wild stuff and I'm like, wow, that's your media. Like even growing in all perlite or, or uh, like cocoa bricks with uh, just all auto watering. I'm like, how do the roots work through there? And then like the end product, I'm like, it's a tank. Yeah, it's good smoke. I wouldn't it's smoke and be like, Oh, cocoa or, Oh, how to probably grow. Like sometimes like when I know it's people cocoa. are like, well, like I have a buddy who is, is, dead set on the lucas formula using um ebb and flow and like his stuff's always very pretty but it's always just has a little lack in something man like it's like the flavor is almost there but it's not but i feel like it's just because he's doing kind of minimalistic on the micro and macronutrients the plants grow good the bud looks good but there's some key elements in the cannabinoids that are missing and he's okay with that totally cool with that some people are other people are looking for a little more terpene rich you know profiles they want something that's a little heavier or they're trying to push the plant to to get the hues that they're trying to get like Everybody I feel like has a reason why they do what they do. I'm very big on just ease of grow and I like flavor, huge on flavor. I've got ugly bud that's super tasty. I've got beautiful bud that has no flavor. It it's just it's really depends, you know. It's it's 2022. Are you gonna find uh a, a pheno, a mother you want to keep in 2022 with the gas that you are always yeah. after? Are you gonna get it this year? So I I'm gonna be running chill out OG from Chris, Mr. Grow It. I've got Soa, which is Sour Diesel BX3 from Karma Genetics. And then I've got Scooby-Doo, which is Ghost OG crossed with 4DD, which I believe is a chem back cross. And between all those, I'm pretty sure. And then I got people on the stairs genetics hitting me up to want to send me some more gassy stuff. I'm like, man, you're so cool, Plutz. So I don't know exactly which one I'm going to keep, but I'm so hunting for that gas, man. Are, are, Rob, Rob, are, in your state, are you limited by a certain amount of plants? So does that limit your choices? 12 like, per patient. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so medically you can have 12 per patient i've got three patients so i'm okay there okay. So yes. uh recreationally 12 total which is still pretty kosher you know what i'm saying yeah, but is. you'd have to hunt pack yeah. at a time for that I'd, I'd suggest instead of going like three packs at a time and go and i right. still wouldn't even suggest going that hard i i shoot myself in the foot often because i'm like oh i let that good phenol slip because i was focused on this pack more than this you know and it's like well, one pack at a time is good but i'm Right now, I'm trying to work with this company for a commercial run, and I'm going to do the pheno hunting. We're going to get the cultivars tested and then get it running on a, a basically micro grow level and get it in some dispensaries here in Michigan. 
these guys are very focused on flavor and, and branding and things that I'm into. You so. know, the, me in my commercial role, I can't, I can't concentrate more than two strains, you know, and have Smart. them produce. And it takes me, it takes me two or three harvests before I really get it to point. Cause the plant, I take my cuttings off the plant, the plant's already climatized to my setting. You know, I'm growing outside and growing indoors. So the, I take cuttings from my outdoor plants for plants that I'm going to be growing next year outdoors. So they're already got, certain amount of climatization going on and I got a better, uh, better results out of that. that yeah, I, I tell do. people that to, to focus on a micro level when you're doing stuff and you'll get to the macro level most times. Mm -hmm. And I don't take my own advice often and I'll just put, you know, pop a bunch of beans and think it's okay. So I've got to slow down myself. So I like the, the fact how you're thinking there two at a time. <clears throat> there is, um, there is something I kind of, I don't really talk a lot about, but I, I do want to be, bring attention to that if you are someone that wants to grow for personal genuinely growing three or four plants it, per cycle and you will have three or four harvests a year very easily you will you can produce more than enough for yourself like it oh, yeah. is like you might produce more than what you would with those 12 plants because those four right. were cared for so well and mm -hmm. trained and taken care of. I, I've come to test for it. When I switched from having my four by eight being my flower to my four by four, night and day in terms of each individual plant's overall structure, health, everything. Where like I'd see one in the back that's a little, you know, small and it's getting covered up and looks a little immature when it should be mature because the bud sites were covered by other fan leaves from other plants, as where these are spread out properly, light penetration's nice. Plants are trained properly, default when I need to. I think unless you've got a big space that you can spend a lot of time in or you're only employed by your garden, it's a little tough to, to try to commit to that. People bite off more than they could chew all the time. I've got a buddy Absolutely. who just got a pole barn who's got his first grow. He just said his first grow done, and now he's got a pole barn, and he's running this big, big setup. I'm like, you know, Rob, good luck. In, in, my, in my situation, I found like I have, I have one, uh, rooms that are 16 by uh, 12, okay? And uh, I'll grow 24 plants in that room. I'll get less than when I grow 18. And since I'm switching over to Blue Dream, I'm going to be growing nine plants in that same room and get a bigger yield than as I was growing 18. Yeah. And those, those Blue Dreams, those are big bushes too, right? You were growing those last year, right? Yeah, the last year they were go. I don't want them to go into their day, but I know, I know. I know. <laughs> and it just, I know. Kind of to uh, for everyone to just describe what we're talking about and pulling it back. If you're personal, really just focusing in on what what you're doing as it. I don't know if you agree with this, but focusing in on what you're actually you're doing in your garden. Like if you're growing for personal, grow for personal and take advantage of this uh, of all these strains out there because. Uh, like potatoes, there's like 5,000 types of potatoes and they're all lo located in South America, right? And we grow four types of potatoes here in the United States. And, and Idaho potatoes, right? That'll but, be canned one day, unfortunately, the commercial level, I feel. I agree yeah. with you, right? And I'm trying, and like Calm, if you're a personal sleepy, grower, relax. you got and, and hundreds <laughs> of strains, like take advantage of that. You know, really grow the possibility. The possibilities with cannabis is insane with, let me, with let me breeding and place, flavors. You know, me for growing medical, I have 125 patients. Okay. So I need to produce, I'm producing for a medicine. So it needs to be consistent. People need to be everything, the same thing every week. But as I was growing for the recreational market, I'd have five or six trains because my customers, Get tired of we get tired of smoking. You know when you're smoking, you want to change, right? It's yeah, like, yeah. You don't always drink rum and coke. Sometimes you'll have a vodka. You know what I mean? So, and that reason. So, so what I were you going to do with that company? Sure were you going to do the R and D for them, Rob, with the strains? Yeah, pretty much. And then I'm going to kind of help with the branding and stuff. So pre cannabis lifestyle TV, I ran a marketing agency for some years, and so we did branding, you know, uh, website design product design, things like that. So I'm going to kind of help with that. I already like their style. I just want to pivot it a little bit for our audience. But the main thing is, is I want to get, it's it's $60 a fucking eighth from here to Las Vegas, I saw. doesn't matter the quality. doesn't matter if you can see the butt or not. If it's in glass or plastic, it's $60 a fucking eighth. So, all right, mm -hmm. that is what it is. I guess I got to accept that. Mm -hmm. So then let's get some quality. Let's get some fucking quality. I got Tyson's butt, Lil Wayne's butt, Burner's butt, every sort of fucking name you could think of. I was so disappointed. It was just so <laughs> average. Like, and, and it may be great in California or at the main place, whatever, but I don't know why 
only the McDonald's headquarters would have good Big Macs. Like, not that all Big Macs are good anyways, but you, what is, how? You know, I can, ex I can explain that to you, Rob, because they'll say, like, I, I produce here, right? And I sell to the Ontario Cannabis Board. Then they take my beautiful hash and they stick it in a warehouse in a box where it's not climate controlled, it's not heated, it's not kept well, and it finishes in their warehouse. And then they distribute it to the stores, and I lose 15% of my quality. See, and it's and probably the same has thing. Has nobody came up with packaging like that's going to be have more... harvest date on? Well, I see the harvest dates are like a month prior that, to when it's there. I'm that, like, that's what, I don't know. Is that over here? It's like six months. Here. Really? Yeah. yeah. In Michigan, so it's like three day. weeks or something. I'm like, is this since drying? Yeah. So it's been curing. I'm in Arizona. Weeks? It's dry. Oh no, they they pump some of that stuff out so quick. Yeah, here in Michigan, there's stuff that like is obviously not really dud, but they just need to get out of the market because the demand is there. But the biggest issue is just the terpenes, and I get that they'll degrade, but I've had good bud at dispensaries. It's just the packaging that looks basic and a brown thing that no one's ever heard of. And it's just like, whatever. So I figure maybe if I could use a little bit of this random clout that I've got on YouTube and the fucking internet to try to right. help sway people who are not growers or who are out of their element and need to go to a dispensary to get some quality shit. Cause I see that brand and yeah. like, Oh, you know, I, I was looking for cookies, but obviously that C is not credible because they don't have quality control. If, if this is the case, why it's like, and it's always the grow that I'm seeing is the big issue. People are like Redwood is kind of so, so in, in Nevada and California, everybody that I've tried their stuff from, it's all very pretty beautifully grown awesome bag appeal but really? the smell and the flavor just are very so minimal that i'm like what does this have a name for why isn't it just called like gp just good pot and leave it at that <laughs> some yeah. regs just regs yeah it's uh, not bad commercial sativa you know well, people ask me what my weed is now and since i don't believe the clone guy that sold it to me i call it uh, commercial sativa you know and this is the last time i'm doing commercial sativa number two you know you're you're really uh, creating have. for your strain and you know, for the strains that you're growing for this company it's and maybe kind of just point out the obvious but you're 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 creating a visual standard for the product wherever that product is grown in whatever state and i yeah. and i really like that that's very that's a i can definitely see that as being a dramatic increase in in um standardness or it, it, like it's an increase in consistency in the marketplace and I, that's that's really cool man actually. i appreciate that dude i think it, the, you know even just like with the charity stuff from the stash i want to be able to leverage this notoriety that i'm gaining randomly and, and instead of just selfishly trying to gain some monetization like I, i'm made more money than I ever have in my life man i grew up extremely fucking broke so yeah. to be able to take care of my mom and myself and my kids mom my kids and helping other people and donations and employees and so many things, man, like that's, I'm, I'm already made it. I'm good. So I want to be able to do what I can to give back. And even with these guys here, I haven't talked to them a, nothing about dollars and cents. I just want to get this product to market. You know, yeah. like we'll, we'll get to at that point, but like, I'm not so concerned about that. I, the money comes with the good intention, the good intention have the business plan behind it and, and an idea. But at the same time, like I just see that going forward and trying to do the right thing. It's a no brainer. People are going to buy something quality once they get it and they see it's good. And then money will follow. Like, I don't have to fucking be scammy about it or, or try to put it in a bag you can't see and get some rappers to talk about it. And and exactly. this next part of what you're doing is going to force you and guide you into dialing in and committing to your next techniques. Yeah, it's going to try to jump around. I'm like, well, the only thing I'm going to change is the cultivar. Keeping my shit. This is what I do. Like, you look at some people like... Uh, even do you Mr. have any Kanuck, uh, do you have same... drops of balance yet? Mark, did you ever send them drops of balance yet or no? I'll send you some. I'm sorry about that. I'd love to try it, man. Fuck yeah. yes. It right works. now I'm running um, Dutch Pro USA and then I'll use some um, Great White periodically and then I'll use Recharge here and there as well. And you, you're tied tight with Dutch Pro. I mean, he's, uh, what's his name that uh, helps? Swafi. I mean, he's there for you guys. Dude, he is 125%. So cool, I mean, his level like, of, of interaction with um, with you and, and everyone that uses their products as well. Um, you know, Dude, is, and that, like, is that something you're product. considering like, using when you, for, uh, for the next, the, that, that grow with, the the neck for the company? Oh yeah. I'm not, I don't see myself changing. Like, again, it's, I'm getting the adequate micro and macronutrients and getting my microbes through recharge or great white, you know? So like, I don't, yeah. I, I told Rico probably gets offended when I say it. I was like, the thing that makes you guys proprietary is your brand and you, it's you Rico. The fact that you give a shit about the plant and the industry and, and you're very, very informational 
heavy. Like everything he tries to do is to educate the consumer. It's not trying yeah. to scam them or sell them. But They've gotten their price it. point down. Exactly. They're working on another product that's going to make the price point even more affordable, especially for commercial growers, trying to get it into Canada as much as they can. Distribution's been a headache, but it, it, it's really like, I just see the authenticity. I've worked with other companies in the past and like behind the scenes, it's different than it is in front. And I'm like, okay, you're about the plant. You're about everything, but you don't even like cannabis. You like fucking cucumbers and shit. That's cool. Specific vibe that you get. Yeah. I'm very big on that. It's like, are you for the community? Because I, I have my own products that I sell to make money. I don't, the sponsors only this last year when my payment processor got shut down and I still had to pay my employees that I even take sponsors on. I didn't even for seven years. I didn't take any. Yeah. What can that's, I want to ask you about the sponsorship. What do you like in your sponsors? And you know, is so not going with you personally, say in a general style, but somebody that's starting off a channel or like, what do you look for? And what, what do you don't like about sponsors, you know, without naming anybody because we don't alienate anybody. Yeah, I don't want to piss any people work with a couple of companies that I'd bitch about. One that I have some videos on Rob Blogs recently, which you may know if you watch, which I have a light from them, but um. <laughs> There's companies that are very controlling and, and they think they're going to come in and tell you how to title your videos and what you're going to say in your videos. And it's like, really, well, why are you fucking with me? Like, would you buy a company and fire all the employees and change the brand name? Right. And sell a different product. It's just ludicrous. Like, and then they also don't want to pay you. It's like, we'll give you affiliate commission and you got to sell all the stuff. It's like, all right, well, this video is not going to get any views. So wait, right. so you want me to title it this that no one's looking yeah. for? You hope that my audience is going to think this isn't some fucking straight up advertisement and you're not going to pay me for it. Oh, and you want to review the video before I release it to make sure I don't say any scathing shit or anything that might piss you. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. As, as you so, so open it, you like open and honest. You want to be open and honest. Yeah, dude. Like 110%. I, I, dude, I've worked with like the, the top companies and said things about them that they didn't like. I mean, we, me and pigeons play on this fucking server for grand theft auto at night doing like grand theft auto rp stuff and like we complain about the server on the show constantly and he's in right. the chat and like he doesn't like us personally probably because of it but like i'm for the people man i'm not for the the top guys i don't care and and i'm the top guy in my company and i'm still more for the people like i take less money i, I see it at the end of the year i take less money than what i distribute to my team so it's like i, I don't know man i can't stand that controlling not authentic shit that goes on with a lot of these sponsors where they they they'll poach on these smaller channels too they'll go to somebody with like five thousand or less and they'll be like hey we'll send you this and this and this and we're not going to pay you anything maybe a hundred bucks and you have to do this this and this exclusive contract you can't work with anyone else it's like whoa so then another opportunity comes up and you can't take it for for, for one light right for, for one, one light. light and then right. if you if you mess up you owe them five grand it's like what the fuck like it, it is crazy and then if you don't get of views well, and then they're like, well, we expected more views and sales from this. Like, Ken, I told you that the video wouldn't perform as well because it's titled this way and you wanted it this way. Like, right. why are you not trusting the chef when I don't know, I know the meals, playboy? Why do you want me to make something I don't do? Yeah. Like, it, it, so I just didn't take a lot of them. Like, that's why CLTV only has one sponsor right now. The, comp just, the company's, the company's got to trust your marketing, your marketing capabilities yeah. and, and your understanding. Like, okay, I'm tied into YouTube and all these platforms. Like, this is how I got to beat the algorithms and, and to engage with the community to the fullest. And if they don't want to exactly. listen, it's like, and, and the product's got to be good because is your product's no good and you're pushing it, then. Yeah, I, people foot. come. I'm not customer service either, but people come at me for customer service because of that. They're like, my lights don't work, my dials don't. I'm like, dude, I don't fucking know. Like, <laughs> mine is too, and they didn't respond to me. So, <laughs> I'm like, fuck, dude, it is what it is, and that's yeah, frustrating. Every time, man. I'm in this. I feel like I'm in the same boat as everybody else. Like, I'm the same person off offline as I am online. I I have struggles in the garden and life and all these things, but people will put me on a pedestal that I have to be there. And the the, the sponsors do too and it's like hey bro i'm a regular person don't think i'm right. just some puppet like you can't just take me and force me to sell out like that's so crazy i have somebody in the community who i was a fan of who freaked out on me and thinks i'm a seller because i work with spider farmer it's like damn they started treating us good and they got a better warranty and their customer service started answering the fucking messages and, and their uh -huh. lights are good too and they got good lights they got so good lights. lights. this is the thing is when a company uh, we got a video called worst companies in the industry on from the stash and i've called out ones i've worked with and it's it wasn't just it was clickbaity kind of because i say hey you suck right now but i hope you get better and yeah. you know, i was a, a turd of a person when i was a kid and people give me company, second chances so i gotta give other people gotta, a chance a good company's gonna listen to that feedback and help and change and and 
want to engage with the community further and yeah, know, absolutely not you know they can't always get butt hurt you know and then they'll cease to exist and people won't right. know who they are you know that's what right. happens you gotta you gotta care about the community the community is the supply and the demand of everything and like look at look them, at um ac infinity they're non-stop listening to their wow. fucking t- right i mean shirt, speaking of their their timing and what everything they're producing and putting they're out like skynet dude like in a good way like they've got everything they know everything they're yep. ahead of the game blows my fucking mind every time Quality. i see something from them i'm like <laughs> they sent me this controller 69 and i was like i didn't even know this was out I'm like oh it's not <laughs> and, and, and the fans you know, you, and, and the fans too those new oscillating, oscillating fans. fans yeah you post stuff man everything. that that is live forever you know, yeah, yeah, you might take it out and someone else might have downloaded it and re- will repost it later, you know, and like that is that all these people, they're hiding behind their brands. They're, they, they'll they dissolve their company, open up another brand, uh, take their same product, put a different color dye in their plastic, put another label on it, resell it to you, you know, yeah. like, like people have no idea how shady all this shit is and and when you when you post something it's it's there forever and i mean you're you're the yeah. face of a lot of shit and it's a lot of i don't want to call it liability it's more oh it is so it it's is liability. Liability. White label, it's, white label, white label look, look at the shit bad. you're dealing with a company we won't mention yeah you know what i'm like, saying <laughs> you know like if i don't have their bottles anymore in my garden because of it like this no. is a thing where it's like you can't be honest and transparent anymore. The cancel culture shit's so real, but not just them. It's the companies who they don't want to be honest and transparent. It's like, we're doing this for the community and to make it better. We hope you just get better. If you suck, it's because you're a bad person. There's yep. ways to, to get wealth without being a turd, you know, Absolutely. but people just want to get, they want to skip past the work and the effort and the, and the consistency and get, get right to the money. And it's like, all right, well, we're going to call you out. That's why CLTV struggles to, to keep sponsors all the time. Cause I talk all the shit that I do. And it's like, <laughs> You know, shout out to P and Chris for making from the stash something that we keep going because like when I had the concept for that, I, I was just saying last night to Pigeons, we were talking offline and I'm like, dude, it's so crazy. Like my thought when, when coming up with this was that we'd grow our individual brands more. And it said this brand is blowing the fuck up, but it's, it's because we all work together in a collective that makes it so when I'm a little more brash or a little more this, like Chris kind of like, well, what he means is da, 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 da. And it's like, that is what I mean. I just come off a little harsher. Like I want you to be a better company and I don't mean you're a turd. I mean, that you're not doing great and you should get better. I'm, so, you know? I'm sorry. My, you know, my vernacular isn't spectacular. So to speak, I say like, you know, sometimes negative things, but I really mean, well, like I don't, unless a company is just shit, like a Hawthorne, I'm going to say it again. And you know, I said it at the I was going to say it right there too. I was going to say Lux too. You guys see, they just acquired Lux. 80% like, of this industry was bought out by one purchasing one fucking company, DF1. you know? I can't believe I can't. that shit. I'm so, it's so get, irritated. Dude, look the at the comment me. section on the video that I did about them. And people are like calling video, me man. some corporate. I love that video, bro. Yeah. And this, I'm like, dude, what? Are you and talking you did about a really great job? You were like yeah. non-biased. You get you pointed out Thank the you. positive. You had it broken did. down nice. I was too. I was Thank actually you. pissed. I actually gave a dislike first before I gave a like. Because of the you, positive shit I said. Because all the I know, positive and, and, shit you said. I made good yeah. music that was bubbly, and I, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. I was like, what the but fuck? I did that for a reason. I want people to like. I'm not a journalist, but good journalism. <laughs> we just talk about this on top of it, is is non-biased, and you let the viewer decide. You know, right. it's like you decide this is our what this is. This is, this is our reality right now. This is what is happening in the current moment of our lives. Yeah. And you have to look mm-hmm. at it from both sides and every view. You did an honest review. It was good. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. And I still, like companies like, I, dude, I, I use Royal Gold. They are distributed through them. You know what I'm saying? Like Nectar of the Gods, I went and dapped up the people, even though the owner like threatened me in the comment section. I got aggressive. But I'm cool with them because he yeah. apologized like an adult and said, hey, man, I was mad. I, I read into this wrong. I, I, People were looking at this in a negative light. I was like, no one said you were owned by them. And he's like, we don't even work with them. I was like, clear it up then, bro. Like, that's amazing. We got MCMA here in Michigan who's trying to get rid of the caregiver program, well, at least limit it like crazy. And there's a right. lot of companies who indirectly work with them who've now come out and be like, hey, DNA genetics is one. We're trying to get out of it. We're doing da da da. Cool. You're forgiven. You're forgivable. How, like, how backwards what they're trying to do in your state right now? How uh, fucking backwards? It's crazy. And it's honestly a, a big mean, problem is I'm not excusing it, but we got a lot of people I know personally with the cash croppers who exploit it. And they're so braggy and dumb taking pictures yeah. on Facebook with all these plants. And it's like, you don't even got a medical license. What are you doing? You can grow 12 plants. Why are you in a warehouse? Why are you holding money 
and videos like what are you doing you're <laughs> right. ruining it for us right and then you got these corporate pieces of shit who just grow mids and they're like oh our competition is the black market and it's like is it because the people who are coming to dispensary don't know the black lobbyists. market you know yeah. like they here got a license they, they, they hold the, the fucking best. retail market and then they're killing the uh, lps and it's the big companies that are are that grow are mids and are shit going on they got the money is the, the the lobbyists have the money to push and i think that's where again if, if the consumer has the knowledge the consumer has the product and they, they can pick and choose then that's going to change the industry with better information out there with content like you got over here at perfect gardens with the the herb that i'm hoping to get out you know for a recreational side if people have an option that's better and you could learn better then the consumer dictates the market these assholes yep. can buy what they want to buy we just won't buy their stuff I like, agree what happened to MedMen? are they still doing stuff not a whole lot. Yeah, they're still buying. I my my buddy my buddy on in California was. Um, you're talking about MedBen. You're talking about the, yeah. They're like yeah, a yeah, butt yeah. of most jokes, and like they're yeah. going downhill as quick as they can. They're burning money. I think they opened like up crazy. a new. They opened up a new shop. Up in New yeah. What was the first thing I yeah, said? I they're still it. buying shit. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. They're still buying shit, but we'll see in ten years, man. Like these are the companies that. The consumer is letting you know they don't have they can do what they want they'll go to a new market and untapped place where people haven't really seen the information but it, it you know. you're seeing the consumer dictate the market more and more and i love it man i fucking love it the internet's helping a lot it really Otherwise, is I, I do i hate to cut it short i do got a shit getting buggy man it's a, a no I, you know what uh, real quick though on uh, not all the time like once a month we get on with uh, our members only is it cool if i send you the link occasionally just no pressure. Dude, I'll send sure. it I came on one time minutes. before. Yeah. Yeah, you did. I, you yeah. did actually. Yeah. I was so okay, cool. I'll you were helping with to, uh man. you were helping with uh one of our trolls too. Yes, yeah. I yeah. love to attack trolls. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can't say uh, trolls. Hey, do you get a lot of Russian bots on your channel? I do quite a bit. I get a lot of people who are uh selling crypto and then there's comments replying to them that all say, Oh, Dr. So and so is the best with crypto. I'm like, okay, that's yeah. interesting. And, and then on my personal Lina, channel, Lina I've got a WhatsApp bot stealing my shit. It's me, right. my picture of me yep. saying, hey, you won. Call I got me that on one. this WhatsApp number. I'm like, that's interesting. Yep. And people fucking believe it. They believe think, this uh, random number. <laughs> I think Mr. Growett just had one because I commented on one of Mr. Growett's. And then a day later, I had a what's up thing from Mr. Growett that I won something mm -hmm. like he doesn't even fucking he doesn't even have a giveaway right now. What? I know. And I only got what's up from my grandpa in Israel. So, like, I'm definitely not out here There's just like saying, hey, yeah. yeah, it's crazy, There's, dude. I didn't know I was at popular. Pro you it's gotta, an honor. You got to remember, guys. If it's free, there's good. It's gonna cost you something. Okay? Yeah, I mean, literally, remember even if it's shit. watching and liking of it, like the, you're not just getting it because people are nice. I'm not gonna give you a free shirt. I'm gonna give you a shirt because you liked and shared a video, or you entered a win, or so you did an action. I'm not mm -hmm. can't just be lazy and expect free shit. This is not that participation world. Well, at least not for me. You know, Rob. I uh, where where can people find you? More places than I realized. So I, <laughs> where do you want got to go? like Here, this one. ten shows, fucking <laughs> total. It's hard man, not but, to find you. Yeah, um, Rob Steel TV on Instagram. If you still do that, um, watch Steel TV's the hub. But that's never. No one could take me down there. You know, gonna take my pride. You know, my stride. Yeah. Slow me down. Um, Discord is ours right now. We'll see. You know, I'm always paranoid with anything that gets popular. Twitch and Discord. I'm like, hey, we're good right now. But wait and see once it gets popular. Um, otherwise twitch.tv slash from the stash podcast or Cannon lifestyle TV or Rob Steel TV got three different ones there. Um, but yeah, watch TV.com is probably the easiest one that you'll stay up to date. What's okay. the, uh, what's the next charity idea? What are you thinking? You guys, well, elaborating Chris fucked up yet? and said that we were feeding kids and he tweeted, feed the children instead of save the children. And they replied, thank you so much. Da, da, da. I'm like, Oh my God. Oh, dang. So we saved a decent <laughs> amount of kids. Right. So yeah, now we're right. going to feed these kids. The next Ooh. one we're going to feed them because they need to eat, man. Yeah. I just couldn't believe I'm like, I was so excited when Chris said that. And I'm like, wait, 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 did we say save? Oh, we said save the kids. And I made a whole ad about this and I promoted this forever. And all of a sudden we're going to be like, mm, don't worry about mental health. They're hungry. Right. When, so you gonna, guys, when you guys yeah. do that stuff, keep, uh, keep us in the loop. I'd appreciate that. Uh, For sure, man. Some way yeah. helping out, supporting you. Have you come on in a conversation like. too. That'd be anything, great because anything. We're trying to do whatever we can to use our platform for the better, man. You know, to be able to help people, to be able to, to monetize, not just for us, but for others. There's a lot of people who need some help who haven't found, either they're being held down mentally or by the geography or environmental something. But it's, it's 
they just need some help. Yeah. And I think the only way to do to get the rest of our society not being turds and not taking from people and not everybody being against each other is we help those less fortunate. We bring them up to our yeah, level. Yeah. We take care of the kids who are literally the future. And we're th- that's again, that's where we get to the right utopia that we're looking for. Take care of Oh people. yes. You know? I love it. I love it. Appreciate I, it, man. Guys, only on Perfect Gardens TV. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Brother, appreciate you coming on the channel. So Jason, I thought, um, actually two things, how you plant seeds. Let's go and start with that one. And then let's move into, you know, just your whole process from planting seeds all the way up until you notice the first time you need to transplant and put it into a larger pot. Could, could we talk about that thought process and, and your, your, sure, sure.